in epilepsies. So, we're going to answer to the questions when, uh, from brain imaging and why, which type of imaging, which sequences, and the methodology of analysis, in particular melanation, measure example of lesional epilepsies and limit and perspective. So, just few words about definitions, but it is very important. Seizure is usually confused with convulsion. Convulsion is a restrictive term corresponding to the paroxysmal contracture of the muscles. It's a motor phenomenon. And seizure is the clinical manifestation due to the synchronization of a neuronal discharge. Symptomatology of the seizures depends on mainly on the origin and the propagation of the discharge with motor or sensitive symptoms. And it is very, very important to know where is the propagation. The epilepsy is a neurological chronic disease defined by the repetition of the seizures. So, age, clinical aspect, and EEG define the epileptic syndromes. And when it is idiopathic, no uh, cerebral underlying lesion, we, you, we say idiopathic epilepsy, and when it is non-idiopathic, it is a cryptogenic with a suspect lesion. So, here you have the epileptic syndrome with the focal or generalized epilepsy, without lesion idiopathic, and here with non-idiopathic. And here it is easy. You perform MRI in all the non-idiopathic epilepsies. It's very important to know what is child absence, benign myoclonic, and you don't perform MRI here, but you perform MRI in the non-idiopathic epilepsies. So, when to perform, it's easy. Idiopathic non-imaging, non-idiopathic imaging. But in neonates and in infants, you have to perform always imaging because the clinical semiology is very, very hard. And in simple febrile seizure, it's a special context that does not require any imaging, but it is a very special context, and you have a seizure from three months till five years old without any neurological infection. So, why to perform MRI? It is very important to determine the etiology in order to have a good treatment. Because you have a medical treatment, but you could have a surgical treatment. For example, for tumors, but not always for tumor. It is also possible for the dysplasia. And it is important to know that the anti-epileptic drugs could lead to a mental retardation. So if you have a dysplasia, you could, in certain cases, a surgical treatment. So, which type of imaging? The CT, it is only for the emergency. Otherwise, MRI is the first choice. You perform CT scan for an hematoma, but in other cases, you perform an MRI. Because the lesions are always no, are small sometimes, isodense uh, lesion without uh, enhancement, and it could be a cortical lesion near the bone. So, if it, the CT is normal, you perform the MRI, and if the CT is abnormal, you perform the MRI. So, there is nothing else but the MRI. So, in practical, CT is a second line exam to look for calcifications. For example, in fetal infections, CMV, Egardie uh, tuberosclerosis, or mitochondriopathy, for example. So, the MRI. You have to perform a tailored MRI according to the clinical semiology. No one size fits all. You have to perform a 3D T1 in a coronal and axial plane. And if the seizure are a Rolandic seizure with a motor seizure, for example, you have to perform an axial plane. And if it is a temporal seizure, you have to perform a coronal plane to see the pole and the hippocampus. I will see you. So you have to see that, the hippocampus, you have to perform the coronal and the axial plane. So, the sequences. In the first MRI, you have the 3 dt one a T2, a flare, an inversion, recuperation, and contrast announcement. The contrast announcement uh, you should perform if the first MRI is abnormal. If it is abnormal, it is 
mandatory. It is important to know that the gadolinium has no interaction with the treatment. So, you have to perform very uh, slice uh, for every uh, open four. You have to perform coronal flare, axial flare, and if the MRI is normal, you have to add a supplementary sequences with a T2 star. For example, if you have a history of trauma, you have a blood here with a T2 star. If you have, if you don't see anything on the MRI, on the morphological MRI with the flare, the T2 and the T1, you have to perform a T2 star in order to find, for example, a cavernoma. And uh, for the ischemic um, gliosis, it's very important to have the flare. So, for example, here for an amartoma, you have to see what you search, because it is very difficult to see that, and you have to perform a coronal T2. So, according to the clinical semiology, you have to perform the sequence. It's well-fitted sequence and axial images if for motor seizures in coronal, uh, in coronal images if temporal seizures. It is very, very important to know that. So, what about uh, etiologies? Uh, migration disorders and dysplasia, half cases. Anoxic ischemia, 30% of cases. Post-traumatic, 10%. And tumor, 5%. So, what stellar dysplasia? It is a migration anomalies with, as you see here, white matter anomaly on coronal T2 and hypo-intensity on T1. It is a demyelination with giant neurons and balloon cells. You see here a Taylor's dysplasia at three months. It is not an hyper signal, but an hypo signal on T2 because of the myelination. You see here the Taylor's dysplasia. Here the Taylor's dysplasia at three months and the Taylor's dysplasia at three years. You see here hypo intensity on T2 and hyper intensity on T2 with the age. At one year, you have an hypo intensity on flare <coughs> and you don't see anything about anything at two years. So it is very, very difficult to uh, diagnose the Taylor dysplasia between six months and three years because of the myelination. For the cortical dysplasia, it's very difficult also. It is a migration anomaly less white matter anomaly. So you have on T1 an isosignal here, and on T2 you have a blurring. You don't see very well the, the cortex and the white matter. You have to be very rigorous in the interpretation. You have to see each circus and each gyrus. Here you see the cortical distance. So, very difficult. Frontal cortical dysplasia. In the T, uh, 3D T1, it is here. You see that? Here. And it is a very, very important epileptic girl. And you see here in one, one slide, uh, uh, hyper intensity on flare, and uh, it is not uh, seen on T2, and you have in one slice a uh, hyper intensity in flare. So, it is very, very important to be very rigorous. So, in a suspect motor cortical dysplasia, you have to see in children the Rolando sulcus. What is the Rolando sulcus? You have here the Rolando sulcus, it is the central sulcus, and here you have the precentral sulcus in front of Rolando sulcus, and here you have the prefrontal sulcus. And in children, in axial motor seizure, you have to find the Rolando sulcus. So, here, the children have a Rolando on the right side. Here, the prefrontal and the precentral uh, uh, sulcus. And here, you don't see where is the Rolando sulcus. It is perhaps here. And we have made uh, positron emission tomography and we have found an hypometabolism here uh, in front of the dysplasia. 
In temporal epilepsy, you have to suspect a cortical dysplasia and you have to see exactly the five branches and the hippocampus. You see here one, the white matter is hypo in terms on T2. One, two, three, four, and five hypo intensity, high five branches. And you have to see also the pole with the white matter here on hypo intensity and the gray matter. In flare, it is exactly the same thing. And in each children who has epilepsy, you have to see left and right side, the five branches and the hippocampus. <coughs> For example, here, we have a control children with the white matter, hypo intensity, and the gray matter, iso intensity. On the flare, it's exactly the same thing. And here, you have a normal left side and you have a temporal dysplasia. You see here an hyper intensity and the blurring. So, it is important to know the limits of the MRI. As I said, MRI must be performed before the age of three months. Very, very important after we don't see the dysplasia. Between three months and three years old, the cortical dysplasia are very difficult to be identified and you have to repeat the MRI after the child is three years old or older if necessary. So now we are going to uh, see the dysembryoplastic neuroepithelial tumor, the DNET, and uh, its characteristic here, you have a hypo intensity in T1 and a hyper intensity in, T, in T2 or flare. You see here with uh, oligodendrocyte and uh, in CT scan you have a nipodense mass with no edema and you have a skull deformed